から。Hi everybody, welcome back. Just a music way down, real quiet. Just a, you know, a, a gentle backwashing of the uh, the wonderful. Oh, I need to turn up my self monitoring <laughs> so I can hear myself. I have to get inside my own brain. Turn that way out. There we go. And I can hear my, my, now I'm in my own brain. So, welcome back everybody. It's been, <clears throat> maybe I can tell by checking the, uh, when was the last time I streamed? That has been months. It's been like a year. No one watches these, it's fine. My, my, my two most loyal viewers are here. Um, so, the way, the way I see it, the way I interpret this layer of reality, one, no console games, so no Bloodborne. I know what we're due for. I think that's what we streamed last was Bloodborne, so it must have been a, a, around a year, um, or so. Because I, I think we had a Bloodborne stream start of the school year, but I've since graduated. Um, but I'm not, the console, the PS5 is not hooked up to any of my computer setup right now, so... There will be no console games. Hate to hate to say it. Hate hate to be the bearer of bad news. So, um, we have a couple different options. My my go to two were either I wanted to play Disco Elysium and start a new playthrough, or I wanted to uh, do like my Final Fantasy dailies. Now I'll have to I'll have to futz a bit with Final Fantasy. Um, just cause I gotta, Final Fantasy, like it, it's resolution dimensions for some reason are not the same. And I don't know how this works are different from like my monitor. So I think I, I have a special thing set up for Final Fantasy in my Streamlabs, but I, I haven't messed with it recently. So I'm thinking it might all be extremely cursed and we'll have to move monitors around, which is whatever, or a disco. So, I, um, Whoever answers first between Disco or Final Fantasy will win the poll. I don't know if either of you are still here, or if you just said hi and then are background listening. Because I already know what I'm going to do for my Disco playthrough. And I already know what I'm going to do in Final Fantasy XIV, which is just level up Ninja more. I want to do both today. Maybe not both on stream. I only do the disco if it's on stream. I already played disco through once. <laughs> my first, my first disco playthrough, I did like. I don't remember what the major stats are anymore. It's been so long. I played it like over a year ago. Disco Elysium's so good. Part of me wants to do Final Fantasy because it's pretty low commitment. Because I'm just streaming till uh, someone at the household is picking up lunch for us. I think like the the parents are gonna pick up lunch on their way home from doing something. So I'm just gonna stream till lunch gets here. Which uh, was three hours from them leaving because they got a bunch of stuff to do out. So. I don't know. You know what? I'm, I'm kind of feeling 14. Let me get it set up. I know I said that you would have a choice, but I mean, no choice is my choice. You all feel me?
Oh, you guys are gonna hear Final Fantasy turn on. That's gonna be funny. You're just gonna hear. You're gonna hear me navigate a bunch of videos really fast. <laughs> I should turn off the master volume when it comes up. Hold on. <laughs> you can so you can listen to the music. Is the music quiet? Is the music loud? I, I, I turned it down so it wouldn't be very loud, but I, I mean, looking at it on the mixer only really tells me so much. I guess I could play fighting games as well if I really wanted to. But I don't think I'm in the mood. I got bodied by Brian last night on Street Fighter. I, at first I was winning, and it was like 10 to 4, and then Brian ran it all the way back. And I think we ended the night at like 17 to 14 in Brian's favor. It's rough, rough for me. I was brutally murdered. Because uh, I had a special version of my Final Fantasy, or, or my overlay for Final Fantasy. So let's see, let's see if maybe that was when I was streaming like on my laptop. Whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Why is it showing this monitor? <laughs> That one seems right. You can't just do the same emote two times in a row and think anything's gonna be different, Jesse. Come on. Everything seems like it's in frame correctly. The, the other one, this one, which is my, my Final Fantasy one, is, is to my other monitor, so I think it was when I was playing on my laptop and I would stream. I don't know, you guys are seeing all my cursed stuff. Heaven forbid. I don't think there's anything. This is using OBS uses ten percent of my CPU. Can you believe that? That feels like more than it should be, doesn't it? Yo, no, that's not one. Nope. There's a hot key to get to the settings page I want. I'll find it. I don't. I know I could just go and click on it, but I actually want to find what button it is. No, fishing log, duty finder. Oh, well, that opens my social page. I didn't know that. That's a good button. Nope, I'll never find it. I'm too foolish. It's Control K. I never would have found it. Special input. Yeah, hold on. Wait, I don't want you guys to watch me tab over it. <laughs> Not the music. I have a disgusting amount of applications open right now. BT Dogs. <laughs> let me go close. Let me close Steam. <laughs> Just have Steam open. There we go. Please understand. Despite my best efforts, I cannot just stream a game window because I, I, I play on on the Swanch. And you know, you know how the Macintoshes. You know how the Macintoshes be. You know what they do to us all, how they ruin our lives. I made more progress on my ninja plane. I like it. I think it's come out pretty good. I just want to make anything surrounding this coat, because this coat is my favorite piece of ninja gear that I've found so far. It also, I could also probably make a Viper fit with it as well whenever Viper comes out. I'm gonna try and do Dawn Trail as Viper. I remember I did most of Endwalker as a Reaper, and then I tried to do most of, um... 
a Shadowbringers as a Dark Knight. So I, I, I generally try to play the, the jobs associated with an expansion for that expansion. So that's what that's actually why I'm bothering to level up Ninja at all. Also because the changes to I saw the Ninja change list where like they're taking away the the futon meter, and I'm like, I'm in. That's all I needed. I don't like upkeeping futon. It's my least favorite thing on ninja. Having to just upkeep futon all the time. Oh, minutes. What am I made of time? I'm so scared not being able to log in early access. Imagine the queue. That's what I'm saying. I got the pre-order, so I should have early access, but even early access is going to be like super backed up. Uh, I'm going to try and make life well, if I can log into the game. A little easier for myself by, uh... Uh... How do you say it? Uh, oh, I'm gonna go and get the two new jobs first, and then grind them to level 90. So hopefully it'll give a little time for the first early access people to clear out of the first couple of questing areas. I don't know how good a plan that is, but it's a plan. I mean, push comes to shove, and if the servers are too busy, I don't mind waiting a couple of weeks. Yeah, we, do, we can't travel to other worlds, right? I just remember that there was a congestion problem, which is why they would shut it down. But I don't travel to... The only reason I travel to other worlds is to get good deals on the on the, on the the guild markets. Usually, like when I'm you're, I'm shopping for like uh, stuff to accessorize the home with, and sometimes when you're when you're shopping for house pieces, you'll find one on the, on the markets here in Exodus. They're like thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of gold of gil, and it's like no, I'm not I'm not paying twenty thousand gil for that piece. Uh, and then I, I look up prices on other servers, and I'm like, ooh, a server is selling these for a thousand a pop? I'll go grab a couple. Just like playing the stock market. Oh, I was working on, there's a couple of, I want to make a new healer fit for White Mage. Don't get me wrong, I like the fit that I have right now. But I'm like, I want to, I'm thinking about Fantasia-ing into a Froth Gal, so I kind of want to make a new healer fit for White Mage. So I'm thinking about grabbing some of the Eden pieces because some of the some of the Eden healer pieces are quite good actually. Um, like let's keep the horrors for a second. I was, I was thinking about trying to make something out of the Eden meat gown, this one, just because it's so pretty. Also, it's so detailed. And it's got like the really nice lace around the neck. It's good. I think it's good. So I want to try and make something out of this top. Um, and I'm thinking about including the, like, Eden Gate wings. Nope. Not Eden Gate. My bad. Eden Grace. Oh, wrong again. Not Eden Grace either. Eden Call. It's not well organized. I don't like fully organized this. This one. I like these little wings. I don't know if they'll match with the... Because they're not... They're white. And I don't know if it'll match well with the... Black healer fit. So... Yeah, we doing female Hrothgar out here. We live in the female Hrothgar life. We enjoy it. We're fans. You know, you know the real thing I have to do first when <laughs> when I start Dawn Trail is I'm gonna have to uh, I'm gonna have to make my female Hrothgar, and that's gonna take me time anyways. I have to do all those things. I gotta make female Hrothgar first. And then I got to get the new jobs and level both of them. And they're both DPS, so that's going to take a while. And then I will start the actual MSQ. Should I stream the MSQ for Dawn Trail? If I have time, I should. Maybe I should. Maybe I should. I feel like people would tune into that, right? People would be interested. Inquiring minds desire to know. I don't know if my Jesty is still here with us, even now. Jesty, you read any book? I'm too attached to my Vera, I don't know. Well, luckily, I got... I got a Fantasia saved up somewhere. I think we get a free one? Also, 
though the new hour long editing period a little well glad you're here for a little just you read any book Justy, I'm so excited about the reading of book. I know you're very busy. Yes. Yes, you're very good. I, I, patient, I patiently await the day where... I, I finally got to the epilogue of Bands of Mourning. I should explain for the people that aren't you. So, me and my Justy, probably underscore underscore nobody, uh, have a little book club that we do. Um, we are reading the complete, the nearly complete works of Brandon Sanderson together. Specifically everything in his, like, big Cosmere project. So, like, we're reading through, like, all of the Stormlight Archive and then all of Mistborn and just all the stuff he's written in that big collective universe. Um, and we, we have a little book club where we read the books together, usually in chunks, and then talk about them. Because you can't not read a Brandon Sanderson novel and be like, I have to say, I have to say things about someone about this. So, we were both, well, for the longest time I was playing catch-up. <laughs> I muted my mic to his knees. For the longest time I was playing catch up because my, my Jessie was already big into Brandon Sanderson novels before she got me to read one. So, but we finally caught up and now we're reading them together. And I finished the book. And now I'm waiting for her to finish the book. And, I, and just like with the finishing of any Brandon Sanderson novel, you get to the end and you're just like, I'm gnawing on the bars of my enclosure being like, I gotta, I gotta talk to my Jessie. But she's a busy lady. She can only read so much. One can only expect so much forward momentum from a Jesty. This is natural. In the same way that rain only falls so fast, a Jesty can only read a book at such a such a speed. Is this a level in which I have my thingy? I, I have to. Their their chat macros scared the shit out of me. I have to check every time I, I enter a dungeon whether or not I have my uh, enhanced buttons. I, I just messed up my rotation so bad. I still don't actually know what like the, per the preferred ninja rotation is for buttons, but I'm trying to piece it together as I go. What's a job whose rotation I really don't know? I feel like the job that I think I perform a rotation without knowing what the rotation is is Dark Knight. Because you just press all your buttons. <laughs> you just press them all when they're off cooldown, and that's really all you need to do. So, it's like that. Uh, almost just a hundred or so pages, maybe like 170. Like you're on page 170, or that that's the rate at which you can read. <laughs> They're yelling at each other. The, the tank and the healer are calling each other to you and telling each other to <laughs> move and sing. It's another classic Final Fantasy dungeon out there. Oh, he doesn't reach. But that's how that's how my life is going. I'm reading Brandon Sanderson novels. I want to. Uh, me and my Jesty have begun watching um, Spice and Wolf again. That was the single target version of my rotation. And I really, I have like a craving to watch more Spice and Wolf, but we haven't, we haven't had time to sit down and like watch anime together recently. Things have been busy. Uh, we recently, the, the friend group TM, 
uh, all decided to get Worms WMD. It was, it was like super on sale. It might still be super on sale. Fun party game for your friend group, Worms WMD. Oh, actually a bunch of the different Worms games are all on sale. And we've been having a lot of fun playing that. Um, that's a very fun, very silly game. Uh, Guys, I'm gonna hit it correctly this time. One, two, three, dispel, buff, this, that. Big damage. Yeah! I think that's I think that's probably close to what the actual rotation is. We were having that. Uh, I recently got Street Fighter, so I've been playing a lot of Street Fighter, mostly with O'Brien. Um, every, every time, every every single day, I think, and not a day has passed without a "You want to play Street Fighter?" invitation coming along. Um, I've been playing a lot of Hell Divers. Um, not so much this week and last week, but got Hell Divers too, and been playing just a lot of that game. Um, which is good. I really like that game. That game's really freaking fun. And every time that they release an update for it, it just gets better. Like, they keep making, like, really good quality of life improvements to the game, and it's always really nice to see. It's nice when... It's the same thing that happened with, like, Baldur's Gate 3. Where, like, Baldur's Gate 3 comes out, and it's... I mean, if you played it at launch, you're like, this game is great. I mean, it has its jank, but it's... It, you can just tell... You can just get the feeling from it that it's like a really fantastic piece of art. And so to have every single time that Baldur's Gate 3 got an update to just have like, well, these are features that I didn't know that I was missing. Or that, because like, normally like in a game like Baldur's Gate 3 where like you make a character and it's heavily story based, I usually don't expect to be able to change my character. And then for them to, like, add the magic mirror to let you, like, change things like your hair and all of your, your... Obviously, I don't think it let you change, like, your your race or anything. But to have that come out and just be able to, like, change so much stuff about your character was, like, really cool. And I was like, I didn't know that I would ever have the desire to do this, but thank you. Thank you, Larian Studios. And then the same thing happened again with, um... The same thing happened again with Helldivers 2, where like the game came out and you're like, I'm really enjoying the game, and sometimes you're, 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 there's features you miss, like it's nice to have like an indicator that one of your teammates has readied up, with like the little salute emote, and they added that, or just recently, in the most recent update that happened not that long ago, they added like the ability to see what planets connect to what other planets, so you know like, oh, if we want to capture this planet, for a major order, we have to capture, like, Hellmire that's right before it. And that will unlock the ability for us to reach the planet we need to get to. Uh, there was, like, a whole website people had going on to keep track of all that, and they just integrated it into the game. It just it feels great. Or, like, they keep making changes to the weapons, and they usually feel great. They feel better now. Before they were nerfing stuff, like, really bad. Man, I'm always a buff over nerf person. I feel that way about most games. I can't, I can't, there are a few games in which I would think that, like, things should be nerfed over being buffed. Especially if they're, like, multiplayer games. No. More so than multiplayer games, especially, especially if they are co-op or single player. I feel like stuff should always be buffed and never nerfed. Do you, know, do you guys get, do you guys get the feeling? You guys get that visceral feeling that that I'm talking about? Oh, our healer has BOD. Our tank is continuing anyways, though, so we'll see how this one turns out. You got to watch more soon? Real. I've been a busy bee, I know. You're a very busy bee all the time, like Justy. Because you're, you're just uh, too important and helpful to not be busy all the time. People always need your help. But man, it's always it's always the worst when like you know, especially like co-op games, 
where there exists like a little bit of multiplayer aspect and obviously like a meta forms around like what gear people should bring it always feels really bad when stuff gets nerfed it always feels really bad because a lot of times like it's like when stuff like they nerf stuff in Elden Ring where it's like man I get it I get why certain things in Elden Ring are, are so strong that they're one-shotting bosses but then sometimes they'll nerf stuff and they'll just sort of make a, an entire playstyle less fun. Like uh, in Helldivers 2 when they nerfed the Quasar Cannon and just made it take a really, really long time to shoot. That was a bad change. It, it basically, instead of like... The players use tools... from the, I mean, when, when a game developer makes and designs stuff, they intend for certain things to have certain uses. And I feel like if you, like, start nerfing all of your stuff because it's, like, too popular or you want people to, like, use other things more, it feels like a lot of times instead of, like, giving players more options, you're just taking away a tool that does what they need. Like, the reason everyone ran Quasar Cannon is because there was just always a lot of, like, smaller armored enemies like Chargers or, like, Hulks. And you just had to have a, a way to clear them. And, like, yeah, expendable anti-tanks are really good at that. But you can only conjure them so fast. And sometimes they spawn faster than you could actually get your expendable anti-tanks to drop. So, like, you're using up all of your ordnance. And then you're just having to, like, run away from the enemies. Which doesn't feel very good. And when they nerfed the... It, the Quasar Cannon, instead of, like, making players choose other weapons, they just had to lean harder on the tools that were already being commonly used, like expendable anti-tank and stuff. And it's not making people, like, pick up stuff like the recoilless rifle. I, was, I just find it kind of frustrating. I need to do another Elden Ring playthrough. I haven't bought the DLC, and I won't, because I I was like, maybe I want to play Shadow of the Earth Tree. I always buy the DLC for From Software games, anyways. And then I saw how how expensive Shadow of the Earth Tree was, and I was like, maybe not right now. <laughs> like forty dollars. <laughs> and I know that it's it's one, it's Elden Ring DLC, so I know that that shit's gonna be massive. But I don't know about forty dollars to just play around. You know? What am I made of money? What am I what am I rich? I would like to. Maybe if it ever goes on sale, I'll grab it. Because I would love to play Shadow of the Earth Tree. Coming up tomorrow, doesn't it? It's gonna be a busy day for Twitch. For, for, which, which is gonna be like 90% Elden Ring streams tomorrow. It's gonna be bad. I'm glad that Shadow uh, or that Elden Ring came out so popular. I always like it when the From Software product gets really popular. Because we love From Software. We're big from software fans here. I wish Armored Core had been more popular. Armored Core 6 fucking slaps, by the way. Hey, any real ones in chat want to play Armored Core 6? You should play Armored Core 6. It's a cool ass mech game. Play it now. It comes out in less than an hour? I thought it was on Friday, y'all. It comes out in the midst of the Thursday? Let's go. Exciting times, man. I'm not gonna watch anyone stream it. <laughs> that's my personal... That's my personal, uh... Oh man, I'm looking for a word and I just lost it. It sounds like vindication, but it's a different word. Uh, like resolution, but not resolution. Y'all feel me? Do you know what word am I trying to remember? Not dedication. 
That's not it. My personal commitment, still not the word I'm looking for, but I'll go with it, is that I don't want to know anything about Shadow of the Earth Tree, so I just won't watch any streams of it. I want to come into a blind. That's the best part of any From Software, is going into a, a new area or DLC blind. You know what, From Software game, I wish I could play blind again. I don't have to say, you all know. Everyone who's in chat knows exactly which game I don't have to say it. I don't even have to name the game. We all just we all just tacitly know exactly the game I'm talking about. That game should come to PC already. I don't know what Sony is doing. Why won't they they won't remaster it? They won't nothing with it. Why do they just let it sit like that? Damn Sony Entertainment. Damn them all. How dare they do this to us? We all want it. Everybody wants it. People who don't have... Now that... Bloodborne was a game that was selling consoles. I'll tell you what. People bought PlayStations to play that game. But like... Now it's an entire console generation out of date, so people aren't going to go buy PS4s to play Bloodborne. And I doubt that people are going to buy PS5s to, just to play Bloodborne. So I really don't see why Sony won't let it be released on a... Do Sony exclusives usually ever come to PC? Uh, a brain check for me. It has Horizon Zero Dawn come to PC? I don't know. Someone please inform me instantly. Because Horizon Zero Dawn is a game that they push as like a console seller that is an exclusive. Has it ever come to the non-Sony platforms? Is it, is it still a console exclusive? Yes, as well as God, God of War is on PC. Oh right, there's like a there's like rumbling about how it came out on PC and people are getting to play it for the first time. It's crazy to me that Bloodborne is not on PS, or not on PC. That's weird, right? I, why hasn't it come to PC yet? I wonder what's a. I wonder why. Did you see that like that that Miyazaki thing where he's like, I'm not opposed to putting Bloodborne on the PC. He's like, I can't say that I want it on PC, but I wouldn't be opposed to it. Just soft launching the idea. He's like, I would. I still, I, I don't know. It's so weird that like all their other big console selling games have all come to PC, but not Bloodborne. Throws me off. It really throws me off. I don't know why. So people would buy it, man. Sony would make money. I know that they get to keep some of the money from the sales of that game. They split it with from software almost assuredly. I don't know why they wouldn't. It's like what you know. It's like when Atlas like keeps refusing to like release Persona games. They they spent like a decade being like we won't ever release Persona three or four on PC. Uh, and then they finally did, and of course, were terrible. That's sort of a different point. It just, I don't know, it just feels like throwing money away. Like, Atlas, for years and years and years, were like, eh, we're never gonna bother to port any of the Persona games. You either got them on the console they released on, or you didn't at all, which meant that people just, like, Unless you had an original, like, PS3, you just couldn't play Persona 3. Or unless you had a, a mobile console of some kind, you just couldn't play Persona 4. Because that was on PS3 and, like, I think Persona 4 Golden? Persona 4 Golden came out, like, on the PlayStation uh, Portable. Is the PlayStation Portable? I know it was on the PSP Vita. Talk about handheld consoles that did not fucking sell good. 
they just never bought for years they wouldn't port them and then they finally ported them uh, the port of Persona 4 Golden is pretty good. If you guys want to do one of the older Persona games, I, I recommend Persona 4 Golden. Do not play the port of Persona 3 Portable, though. They used uh, an AI to upscale all of the backgrounds of Persona 3 Portable, and they look fucking awful. They look so bad. I've just had three tangents in a row. I was talking about something else, and then I started talking about talking about Elden Ring. That's what I was talking about. And I got totally distracted. Oh, I thought that that had stopped tracking me already. Sorry, game. So I guess things will get real interesting on Twitch and social media in an hour. And people inevitably start playing the Shadow of the Earth Tree. Anyway, Shadow of the Earth Tree made me reinstall Elden Ring. It made me be like, maybe I should do another playthrough. I usually do multiple playthroughs of any From Software game. I've tried to do second playthroughs of Elden Ring, but the game is just too big, man. It's really hard to, like, go through the process of exploring every cranny of that world a second time. When it's all new, it's fantastic. But, like, when you've already done it, then it just it gets really slow. You have to explore a lot of those, like, those little dungeons and tombs all over again. A lot of them don't always have great rewards, so it can kind of drag. Kind of drag. The worst part is just like, if you're like really powering through Elden Ring, the most annoying part for me is going to get like all the ball bearings to get all of the upgrade materials. That part's tough. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. Because it's because of all the open world features. You just have to travel so far to get to the places that you want to get to. Which is why I took a really big break. And now that I've taken so long, I feel like I can come back to Elden Ring. Because it's been a long time. Other From Software games, it's not like that you just hit it back up and do it again. The DLC character I'm using was from my dagger only playthrough. And in prep for the DLC, I went through and killed all the bosses. Hell yeah. Do they still have do daggers? I don't remember. Do daggers still have the really good dash move? Is that, is that an Ash of War that you can put on them? Is that that dashing slide that's got really good iframes? Because I remember you could you could cheese almost everything in Dark Souls Three with that. Watching the like the Yimpa uh, beating Dark Souls Three without walking, and he just has daggers, and you could just use it to just iframe through a bunch of bosses' stuff is crazy. People are posting patches, fan cams. I think Bloodhound's step was nerfed slightly. It's always like that. I see why. Now that... We don't love nerfs in single and co-op games. Like Elden Ring, but... I understand why they nerfed Bloodhound's step. You could do... We get it. We don't love it, but we get it. Just because they do a thing doesn't mean that we all have to love that they did it, right? Because if we're all being really honest, it's kind of cool to watch someone dodge the Radon Meteor with Bloodhound Stick. That's kind of cool. I'd say that that's kind of cool.
But I mean, if it was anything like the quick step in Dark Souls 3, a little too strong. Oh, oh shit, the, the, the Elden Ring patch notes, version like 1.21 or whatever, lets you summon Torrent in the Elden Beast boss arena. Now that's a good change. That boss fight is too slow. I think the Elden Beast is cool. Now, hot take. They nerfed cheesy magic spells, which is kind of funny. That's bullshit. You should let people one-shot every boss with the funny laser beam. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Miyazaki. Please don't turn magic into the magic from <laughs> Dark Souls 2. <laughs> magic is such a thin line. Because if you if, if they nerf magic even a little too much, it becomes fucking useless across the board. <laughs> and it becomes entirely unviable. They gotta be real careful. I kind of want to do a magic playthrough of Elden Ring. The problem is getting all the goddamn spells. <laughs> now, that part's rough. <laughs> we all love Elden Ring, and we all love playing Elden Ring, and we all love enjoying Elden Ring. But having to like go collect the spells you need for your build, kind of a pain in the ass. It's not like that for physical damage builds, because you can get by on like whatever you find until you get to the weapon you want. You know what I mean? Like, you can start, like, a strength build and just use the straight sword until you get, like, a two-handed hammer or a two -ha or a great sword that you prefer a little bit better and then go with that for a while until you get... But, like, there's only one of each spell. And if you're like, I really want to use this spell, you gotta go get that spell. Uh, they nerfed the infinite FP once. Like, they nerfed it a second time? As well as Terra... Terra Magica, which is the AoE spell that increases magic damage. Yeah, that's the big floor sigil one. I think it's so... They're trying to... I, I could, I can, like, bodily feel Miyazaki trying to nerf the one magic setup that people do. What they do, the Terra Magica, and then they, they drink the FP tier, and then they hit the... What is that? Az Azure Comet? Or whatever the big beam cannon is. Yeah, I can, I, you can, you can like, you can feel them viscerally having meetings at the From Software Development team being like, guys, we have to stop them from one-shotting every boss in the game by doing this. And I'm like, I don't know. Sure, I guess, but I'm just watching people one-shot Moog with it, and it's like, but anyone can, can kill Moog easy, because you can glitch into his arena and shut off his AI. You can just get clip into Moog's arena and his AI isn't activated and you can just kill him while he's standing there unactivated with melee weapons. It's not hard. <laughs> that boss fight... Hey, can I have a Elden Ring hot take? Moog, Lord of Blood? Bad boss. Good boss for the most part. His bleed mechanic? Dog shit. I hate to say it. We're one of the worst... The, they patch the glitch. Uh, the, someone life finds a way. <laughs> someone will find a way. There's always a way. Um. His his uh, his knee heal, that like triple bleed mechanic, terrible terrible fight mechanic, awful. It's up there with water foul. It's not as bad as water foul. But it's bad. It's not fun. It's just not a fun mechanic. I'm sorry. I don't... Th hey, here's a hot take. I don't think Souls-like boss fights should have a heal check. <laughs> it's not interesting. It's not engaging. And it's a hard knowledge check for new players. All, 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 all you do is get a cheap kill. Uh, Melania's Waterfowl should just be... Hey, hot take. Removed from the game. Don't get me wrong. I fought and I beat Belania Blade of Mikula. I think uh, one patch after they changed, they adjusted for healing a little bit. But like, 
Oh my fucking god. That boss fight is fun until she uses that move and then that boss fight's dodge. There's something about an undodgeable move. Or I guess a frame perfect dodgeable move in a in a Souls game that just it's so so lame. <laughs> it's so lame. So much about that fight is so cool. And then she does that move and it's like and why and why pray tell do I care? That no it's rare that a, a boss fight in a Souls game is like, I don't care, I'll just cheese it. Except for Melania Blade of Nicola. Which is bold of me to say, consider that I beat her cheeseless. It's even worse that like using like an, uh, any sort of spirit just makes the fight harder because she will just heal herself all the way off of the spirit. That's annoying. I don't like that. That kind of makes me angry. Uh, axes, whips, bows. That's great. They clearly didn't buff bows enough. Hey, all I'm saying is that until it becomes viable to do a pure bow playthrough of a From Software game, bows are terrible. They exist only for the purpose of pulling enemy aggro and nothing else. I'm sorry, I don't make the rules. If they want people to use the bow, they have to make the bow do meaningful damage. And they won't. And they won't. That's the worst part. Because I know they buffed the bows, but they did not buff them enough. <laughs> no one's, no one's going to use them anymore. People still aren't going to use them, because they won't do enough damage. It's crazy. I feel like bows should do good damage. Is that a crazy thing for me to think about? Is that is that too crazy of me? To be like, I think that the bows should be able to deal near equivalent damage to a melee weapon. I don't think that's crazy. I don't think that's nuts. All I'm saying is that like, you, if you do like a really high dexterity build, I feel like you should get great damage out of your bow. I feel like you should be able to fight bosses with it. But we don't live in that world. We, we live in the world where uh, nobody... The only reason that you ever use a bow in a From Software game is because you need to aggro a specific enemy who's kind of far away from you. Or, like, it's like a Dark Souls and you get, like, the great bows. Not to get spoily from the trailer, today's look like we're going to be getting a Pontiff 2.0. Do you mean, like, a, a boss with, like, a Shadow Clone style mechanic? I remember that boss... I think that boss, like, really mess up my poor Jesty. I thought that was rough on the Jesty, that boss. Sully P. Because a boss with Shadow Clone is is pretty rad. Or for oh, like two glowy swords. We love two glowy. We love glowy swords. Doesn't even have to be two. We love a glowy sword. We love a glowy sword that you can make from the boss soul. We love a glowy sword. We love a boss weapon that's good. We love a boss weapon you can use. <laughs> so many boss weapons are just so bad. Some boss weapons are incredible, though. I mean, I really like using Melania's sword uh, whenever I, uh, I sort of pivoted to being a dexterity build for a little bit. Because I, I wanted to sort of be an intelligent strength build, but I had a really hard time making my build work. I was like using Moonlight Greatsword and stuff. And then I switched, like, after I had beaten like almost every piece of content into a game to like a pure dexterity build, and I was like, this is just better than what I whatever bullshit I was doing, which is kind of annoying, because I really wanted to make a good uh, 
a good int strength, but because they add a lot of intelligence strength gear. Which I was very excited to see. That's a whole unexplored category. They did a lot of good stuff to mix magic with weapons, with like intelligence strength or faith dexterity, faith strength, int dex. They had a lot of weapons that that paired well with a magic build. Normally magic builds just have to suffice on the scraps of some other weapon and just have mid scaling and no special magic shit on it. So it was it was very refreshing to see them add a bunch of cool unique weapons that are slot themselves in really naturally to a uh, a magic build that also wants to have a reliable melee weapon. A sort of a sidearm. We love to see that. Uh, I wanted to use the Moonlight Greatsword. Maybe in my new magic build I'll still end up using the Moonlight Greatsword because it's the goddamn Moonlight Greatsword. I can't believe they added a Moonlight Greatsword to armor form. Their robot mech game still has a Moonlight Greatsword. <laughs> And we love that. We love the Moonlight Grid Sword. I'm excited for uh, the Moonlight Grid Sword in the game that they make after Elden Ring. My favorite iteration of the Moonlight Grid Sword so far, I think, has probably been Bloodborne. Just because the, the effects they used on the on the blade are so choice. Have we done a Moonlight Grid Sword build? In in Bloodborne? Whenever when next I get the my stuff hooked up to my computer. Which may be a while. We gotta do. God, I do mean like it's like, that thing is so pretty. I love the effects on it. I don't remember off the top of my head how the effects were for Elden Rings. I thought they were pretty good. I don't remember if they were of what I expect. Given Bloodborne. Because Bloodborne's was very spacey. And I dug it. I also like that you could- it was like a normal greatsword that turned into a Moonlight Greatsword. We love Bloodborne. We love Bloodborne out here. Bloodborne 2 win. Never. Crystal Tower. I felt pretty lucky when I was, uh, I think I ran Alliance Raids at like level 80 or 90 and I still ended up getting one of the near raids. That was an exciting, uh, fleeting moment in my life. Sometimes, sometimes you get the, the Banger raids and sometimes you get to do Crystal Tower again. Not that Crystal Tower is bad. It's a pretty fast one. But... I do like doing the mirror raids, and I do like rolling on the glamour. You guys think that... Oh, what's his name? The guy with the snakies? Who is presumably the... The big bad guy of the DLC? You think his spear thing will end up being a good weapon? I presume it will be makeable. Some so many boss weapons are. You think it'll be good? Hope so. We love good spear weapons.
Ooh. Lost actually more people than I would have liked. I might have flipped a meteor. That's kind of unfortunate. <sighs> How's everybody's day been, by the way? Has everybody had a good day? A busy day? Begu, we love a goo day. We're big goo day fans here. As has been well documented, as is well recorded. We love gooey day. Well, I'm glad, Mesa. I'm glad things have been going, going all right. I know the Jesty is here only in spirit. <laughs> and that Juice Herb are probably busy, or just left me on a computer somewhere. But... We hope, we hope that the Justy is also having a good day. We hope that he was having a good day. We hope that everyone's having a good day. Is Thursday a nebulous day of the week for anyone else? Hold on, does that statement make any sense? Does anyone else, like... Get to, like, Thursday and... It's not, it's not like a Wednesday where, like, it's like, ah, oh, this is the middle of the week. Or it's not like Friday where it's like, ah, oh, this is the end of the week. Like, this is just a day of the week. You know what I mean? Sorry, I sound like a Thursday hater. I don't mean to come across as such. But I mean, there's, some, there's something about Thursdays. They feel unreal to me. Thursdays are less tangible than other days, they're more ephemeral in nature more transient. I feel like a, I feel like a Thursday is a short. Thursdays and on occasion a Tuesday, I feel like are shorter days of the week than other days of the week. I don't care if that's not a universal experience. I'm really feeling it in my brain. I feel like Thursday comes and goes. You know what? It's all the days that my Jesse doesn't stream. Those are all fake days. Oh god, I'm gonna die on Ancient Flare. This is a horribly embarrassing day. We wiped on Ancient Flare! Now I don't have to feel bad. I greeted a little too hard. Oh, hi, Otto! <laughs> Thank you so much. I hope that you're also having a good Thursday. I'm just doing a little bit of- I'm just doing my dailies, and then maybe I'll play some disco. A little bit of disco would ease me. I'm having a relaxed time. I'm waiting for lunch. I'm so bored waiting for lunch that I decided to stream. For the first time in a hundred thousand years, we're streaming. dog has been my dog likes sleeping on my bed that's a new development so i have a uh, my family owns a, a little small dog and we all love the dog very much but ever since i i came back from college she she whenever the parents aren't around 
like they're out or about or they're working on something in the yard, she will just come and sleep on my bed. She's there. She's she's here with us even now. Checking out the new conch patch soon. Ooh. I think the time has come. I think I think the lunch may have arrived, and that's the that's all. And that's that may be all she wrote for the stream. Never mind, lunch ain't here. We go on. We live here more. Shit, that was so close. That was so close. That was so close. Second most watched category DLC is not even out yet. People are like getting warmed up for it. They're like they're doing their final like patch up where they're like getting right to the DLC entrance and stuff. People are excited for it. It's about to come out. It's not every day. It's not every day you get one of those. 430. It's getting bigger. <laughs> the number grows and shall continue to grow. You play the Elden Ring? I play the Elden Ring. Not the DLC. Um, I, I played Elden Ring all the way through, close to when it came out. And uh, the El I looked at the DLC and it was too expensive. <laughs> I'll get to it later. I'll get to it either when Shadow of the Erd Tree goes on sale, or uh, when I have a more disposable income and I can justify making the purchase to myself. I already bought a bunch of games recently, so I don't feel too, too, too pressed. Um, I don't feel pressed on missing. It's a, it's a, it's a from software DLC. I'm not pressed about missing out on anything. The most interesting part of any FromSoft DLC is I don't get any FOMO from it because they're they're nice single player co op things that you can just sort of come back to at any time. Um, I wonder, I wonder because I think there's a lot of. From software DLCs I didn't get at time of release. Like, I don't think that I got, like, the Dark Souls 2 DLCs until all three were out. I don't think I bothered. And then when all three came out, I, I just played them one after the other. Um... I think I, I think I did the Dark Souls 3 DLCs pretty close to when they came out. Because I was pretty, I was pretty locked in to the Dark Souls 3 DLCs. I think I played them as soon as they came out. Are good DLCs. Do you think there'll be a second Elden Ring DLC? I don't know. Shadow of the Earth Tree seems like it's gonna be pretty big. I wonder if they'll bother to do another one. Or if this will be like a Dark Souls one where they get the one big one and no more. I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't release another DLC for Elden Ring. Especially since Shadow of the Earth Tree looks like it's gonna be really big. Sorry, I was stretching. I'm so close to getting Ninja to 90. And then what's next? Um, I guess I could do Monk. I haven't been- I'm not feeling Monk. You know what, maybe when Dawn Trail comes out and changes Monk, I'll like Monk more. I guess Dancer. I think Dancer has been my favorite ranged DPS. 
because even at like because I, I did like palace of the dead with bard so i got to check out all like the level 60 abilities for it and but I dig Dancer, and I like Machinist, so I'll probably end up... I don't know if I'll do Dancer before Dawn Trail comes out, but I'll get to it at some point. I probably need to focus on finishing leveling up all my crafters, though. I should probably prioritize that. I made progress. I, I've gotten a couple departments of the hands to 50. I got 50 carpenter, 54 blacksmith. I'm close on goldsmith. I got weaver at 50. I need to just get them all to 50. I haven't been doing the job quests. I think I'll do some leveling and then get some better actual equipment for the crafters and then go back and do the, the job quests. Just because attempting, because I'm getting them all to 50, and then as I go through, a lot of times they'll require uh, items from other crafters that I can't make yet. Um, I ran into that problem a couple times where, like, I needed some alchemist items that I couldn't make because my alchemist was only level 30. So, also, it doesn't seem like the crafter quests give you anything for ARR. They don't seem to give you any abilities. I need to do them for completion's sake. I imagine that maybe, like, the other X-Packs will have an ability lock behind it. Fisher. Fisher is an important one to do. I didn't- I, I only level up the Fisher by doing ocean fishing, so I don't actually usually realize how far along I am as a Fisher until it's- it's too late and I'm really behind. And I- I booted up Fisher and I opened the traits and realized I was missing like three or four different kinds of fishing because I hadn't bothered to do any of the job quests. I was like, I gotta fix this now. Started going through all of my Fisher quests through like Heaven's Ward. I still think I'm either at the end of Heaven's Ward or the beginning of Stormblood. My game does not like streaming and PvP at the same time. Does not like it. Not the frame rate on my Final Fantasy ever ran good. Rare is the day that I have a good frame rate on FF. But I don't need a good frame rate. I like the game too much. Thank you, thank you, enemy monk, for pushing me way out of the range of your friends. We love, we love an enemy monk who shoves you to the back line of your own team. We appreciate their help. Blue is here.
like a lot of our team is still fighting over there and we already lost it. Though. my slideshow. You know what throws me off about playing monks? Sorry, I was just thinking about monks. And I was thinking about well, what, what it is about monk that bothers me so much. Um, it's the fact that like you have like your self-damage buff, and then you have your, your dot, but not, none of them actually line up with your global cooldowns. So like you always have to either over cap them or let them drop a little bit if you are constantly doing your global cooldown. And I don't know why, but that bothers me like a lot more than maybe it should. There's something about the fact that it's so uneven that bothers me. I like because Dragoon's got a self buff and a dot, but they're like perfectly aligned to your rotation, so you don't ever have to. I accidentally immediately pressed my normal range button and activated it. Bad. The lag is bad. <laughs> I don't like it because because with the dragoon you just alternate your two melee combos. And you don't ever have to think about it. But you can't you can't do that. Anymore. You just can't do that as a monk. You always have to manually watch your timers. It's kind of annoying. Maybe maybe it's because I haven't like. They're only like level 60 for me, so I haven't unlocked all of their meters and mechanics, but I just don't like their fundamental rotation. But the change, they're gonna adjust the dots and stuff, so that could be fun. I'd be all down for a monk that either has no more self buff or dot, or just has the self butt and dot timing aligned to their melee combos but it seems like they're they're changing it where like instead of that you have like you do the the different moves to build up the, that funky little new meter they added i think and i am even chill with that I like it it feels more monk to use moves to make your other hits stronger i don't know monk just doesn't feel like a dot it doesn't sound like a job that would be a dot job, does it? It's not, you're supposed to beat people up.
Ah, I got seasoned too much. Dang it. The worst part of new PvP is the amount of crowd control effects. You don't mind a crowd control effect. Love our chances of winning right now. Their frame rate would improve if I rendered less peepons. <laughs> At the same time, probably just because my computer is getting really fast. OBS, I'm looking at the CPU usage on OBS and it's getting bigger. Oh no. And we're giving it too much, too much to chew on. Blue is here. <laughs> now nah, I couldn't get away fast enough. Well, blue took the whole map, and I think we threw. <laughs> we were so busy fighting red that blue came up behind us and just took everything on the map. What? Oh, I had our spawn too. Scary. 
That monk is running at me. <laughs> watching a monk like fist the the monk run is so funny because they're just like pumping their fists running really fast it's a good animation oof Let's see, what's next? We did Frontline, we did Alliance Raids, we did Leveling, that's all the big ones. I think it's just small stuff now. Because it's through Trials, because it's fast. That was quick! Whenever I keep Trials, I, trials, I expect it to be like the same as any other dungeon or that, but it's usually... Maybe it's because it's an 8-man that... If you're a DPS, you can get into it a little faster. It's a shame it doesn't get as much XP as others, though. Ooh, hey! So all I'm saying is that sometimes you get a banger on the roulette. Because I didn't press the button right. That's embarrassing. Which is about twice, doesn't it? I thought it changed the difference. No, it does. Never mind. I lied to myself. I see it to myself. Man, Hades goes fast. I forget. I guess that the couple of times trying to run Hades EX has distorted my understanding of how fast the first phase goes.
I'm sorry, I'm just vibing to the 80s soundtrack. I'm not even saying anything. Getting, I'm getting a little too into the zone. I'm just zoning out. Good uh, greatsword from the first uh, Endwalker raid here. The one that's like broken and then the rest of the blade turns on with a lightsaber. I love that one. Fine gang. Shadowbringer's Bringer's Dark had a funny little trick with the shield that can block Doom. <laughs> Really? There's a glam in the media channel. Oh, that's a big deal. Like the one in Vajja? I wouldn't know. I know what stuff to use for like Eureka runs now, but I have no idea what lost actions to use in Vajja. I don't use any of them. I don't use any lost actions when I'm in Vajja. I hate, I hate to say it, but uh, the way I, I play Bajja is as unoptimal as it gets, I'm sorry to say. Paladin. The tank buster applies doom, but not Dark Knight. Let's go. That's fantastic. Is that fixed, or is that does that still exist in the? Because I imagine they would have fixed that, but I it might if it's related specifically to how that boss attack applies doom, it might still exist. Do they fix that auto? Do you know? So that's very funny. The expansion job is just better at this one specific mechanic. Right. Child, that, that. Uh, we could do. I'm not doing MSQ on stream. I'm sorry. I hate to say it, but MSQ is the roulette that we do while we read a book. We don't live for that one. Oh, I should go pick up the stuff on my island, huh? I finally got back into bothering to check up on what was going on on my island like two days ago. So now I've been just been doing a bunch of island stuff. I'm almost ranked 10. I'm just excited to unlock flight if I'm being so honest with myself. We're all here. We just want to unlock flight. 
Specifically, I just want to fill in the parts of the map on the island sanctuary. Oh, it bothers me so much. It bothers me so much. Oh. This just has a quest for me. I guess I'll pick up whatever is in the workshop as well. I planned out the workshop for the entire week though, so I shouldn't, until the, like, the, my two break days come around, I don't need to think about it, which is nice. I also, I know this is probably very bad of me, but I haven't bothered to figure out how the stock market works. To like make a good stock market choices, if I'm being really honest with myself. I just, I do it all based on what materials I have. Drug. I'm sure it wouldn't be too hard. To figure out like how to tell what stuff I should be crafting to get the most seafarers crowies, but eh. I don't do island sanctuary to think hard about things. I do it to walk around and just accidentally run into rare creatures and be like, oh I should craft some snares to capture that one. I haven't bothered to name all of the new ones I caught the past day or so. Which is unfortunate. I'm sure I could come up with good names for all of them. I like the little animals. And then I gotta turn my crops over, if any of them are finished. And then I'll go see what Felicity Spurball wants from me. I accidentally forgot that I had a third row of crops, but like all of my, my crops on like the top shelf grow, at, uh, grow on an alternate day from the first two tiers of crops. It bothers me a lot, but... I'm not going to skip a harvest today just to make them in sync again either, so I'm just going to live with sort of the consequences of my actions and my choices. I'm so close to 10. I know that 10 to 20 is probably going to be pretty tough, all things considered, but... I don't know. I don't know if I'm s super concerned with it. Because I just want to get to 10 to get all the. Uh, 20 is what. I think what gives you the. The motorcycle, which I do want. I do want that bike. I want that bike bad. But more than I want the bike. I think I just want to get the ability to fly on the island at 10. I need to pick up more Pococho seeds. The problem is, is I don't necessarily remember where they are. Or if there's an easy place to harvest a bunch of them. Oh well. There we are. Let's see what Felicitas for a ball wants from me. Hello. <laughs> Making so much worse than usual. Skull soon. Holy. It's a message for you. Oh. Vision realized. Mission complete. Uh, let's go. Oh, we love getting rewards that we don't understand. 
Uh, good times that you teach you crafting an iron hatchet. It will require new types of materials and trees around here. You probably have used one before. It's true. Don't murder your character. Other mammoths may be content to be murdered in their sleep. Isle Keeper's iron hatchet has been added to sanctuary crafting. Climb this will add a new type of materials and trees. About hints on how to realize my current vision. Well, thank you. I didn't think there was going to be tool upgrades. Oh, and lo and behold, I've got the stuff on me already. Now I have to go hit every tree again to see what changes. <laughs> oh, right, I can't not talk off here. This is exciting. I get to fill out more of the sanctuary gathering log, which, which sits so truly empty. There's new items to be had. There's still some stuff that I don't have a tool for. Which makes my brain itch. I just know that there's going to be some good stuff there. Ooh, island coconuts. Got one of the apple trees. This is a different kind of tree. Island resin. That's a new one. I guess they're all going to be a new one. I don't know why I'm mentioning it specifically. Island Beehive Chip. Nice. to 10 now. Wood opal. Opal is once a shard of petrified wood proving that you can become anything as long as you set your mind to it and as long as you have the dedication of millions of years at your disposal. Fair enough? I think that's all the, I think that's all the trees to smack. I think that's every type of tree. I think the opal was the last new item. This gap bothers me. I don't like that. I assume that whenever I get a, a new hammer or pickaxe, it'll fill that out. Because it's right next to all the other gatherables like it. still bothers me. I don't like it. We don't like a gap in our log. It's like how whenever you're like filling out like the fishing log for a particular fishing hole. How like you get like one of the very end fish and one and all of the like first three beginning fish and you just sit there and you fish for like 10 minutes and you never get like, like fourth fish on the list irks me something fierce. Not that I often fill out uh, fishing hole logs, nor will I. I know that f f filling out the entire fishing log is uh, one, one journey I don't think I'll ever do. I'll do a lot of things in Final Fantasy, but I don't think I'll, I don't think I'll get to that point. That seems like a hard life. The people waiting like multiple weeks for like the one time that the fishing window opens for a particular fish. I remember people posting about that when like the, the DDoS attack happened on the server and FF was down and people were on were begging like please release the DDoS you don't understand the I'm trying to catch a fish. The most terrifying uh, piece of Final Fantasy content I've ever played and then I had the realization that I liked it has been uh, Eureka and Bastia. More so Eureka, because I got into Eureka and I'm like, I don't know if I love this. And then like, I got sherpa through Eureka and I'm like, I can't believe I like this. <laughs> Now every, now every once in a while I'll, I'll see the Eureka link shell post about a cooldown I'll be like, well I gotta get in there! <laughs> I 
I need to finish Bastia. I have not actually finished Bastia. Probably because... The reason I never... Because I, I, I got through the first... Through the Bajjan Southern Front, and then I did DR. And then I didn't do the rest of Bajja because I was making the... Uh, I was making the the gun the gunbreaker weapon, and it was like, oh, you have to do a dr, a three to three five times, and I was like, no. <laughs> that was one of the things I was like, oh, I'll get around to doing dr that many times, and I don't think I've done it. The worst part is that I did my first dr run before I upgraded the weapon, so I think I, I th it might still be in my inventory. In my Chocobo saddlebag. Yeah, I only have one of the bitter memories of the dying. I need to get the next step, and you have to get like a bunch of them. Not that it's hard to run DR, it's just that it's not populated enough to regularly run DR. And even then, most of the time when you run it, it's like all new people. It's either new people or it's people who love Bajja. And we love people who love Bajja, but those runs can be really tough. I should probably look into- I should ask on the Eureka Discord that I'm in. I should really ask them for tips on what lost actions to use. Or what jobs to play. Is there a particularly good job for doing Baja? I know that there's sort of a meta around certain DPSs and tanks and stuff that was really good for doing Eureka content. It usually tended to be the ones who had good heal self-heals, like Warrior, um, Reaper had a really good defensive ability that was nice for Eureka, Dragoon. Then they made the changes, and I think Samurai is now really good. Just because it does a lot of damage. I'm wondering if the same applies to Bajja. I haven't noticed it as much, because Bajja's lost actions seem very similar but different in important ways from the the special eureka actions so i suppose i suppose i'll live to find out if i keep doing bajja content i would like to get to the end of bajja i heard that the story just sort of stops for bajja like it never quite finishes which is kind of sad i also don't know if it's true We'll find- I'll live to find out, as ever. I'm just walking around and hitting trees for a long time. I don't know, I got a new resource. I feel like I should build a stockade of it. At least ten of them, right? That feels like a natural progression of thought. I need a bunch more of this island resin. The island resin, find more beehive chips. I'm trying to go to the other section of trees. I was actually doing a little bit of Red Mage when I was doing Pajja last time. I like breaking out Red, Ma Red Mage, my favorite caster that doesn't deal any damage. I like breaking out Red Mage whenever I'm doing like weird solo adventuring content, just because it's nice to have the self-heal and I also like having the res. I think it remains my favorite caster. I think that the I don't know if anyone here has strong opinions about the Black Mage changes that are coming in Dawn Trail, but I kind of like it. I like the changes that they made to Black Mage and Dawn Trail. 
I've, I've heard that Black Mage players were kind of upset about the changes, but I never actually got the chance to like hear from Black Mage players to understand why they didn't like the changes. So, I mean, they, they could have heard that. The thing I really liked was the ice change. Um, I like that it's not tied to the server tick anymore. Um, the new fire thing looks cool, even though... It says there's a quest here for me. Is there not a quest here? There's like a quest marker like right here. Oh. It's the career. Ooh. A Tataru quest. Let's go. You know it will run good, the cutscenes. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully those will have a better frame rate than the actual gameplay. Well, let me put my hand on my computer. That's yeah, disconcertingly hot. <laughs> I'm, I'm taxing the system to its limits. My fanless computer. Yeah, she got the big hat. <laughs> Just calling him familiar Rogadine is mean. <laughs> we all know who he is. It's so funny how big that head is on a lot of them. We love a quest reward. Oh shit! It's an actual full glamour set. I didn't expect that. Oh, the boots, the boots, the boots, the boots. Yes, we love good boots. These are good boots, too. 
I like these boots. I don't know if I've ever hung out on a quest reward screen long enough to see the panning of the camera actually stop before. Yeah, it'll just keep going. It goes all the way up. No, here's the problem. If we go to Linza Laminsa lower decks, my computer will burst into flame and we'll all perish terribly. We have to go somewhere that people aren't. Why is the teleport attached to my mouse? <laughs> oh no, put that back in its spot. <laughs> Lock my hotbar again so I don't do that. Whoops. Um, I probably should go to any of the main three cities because they're going to tax my stuff too much. Ragger's Reach doesn't have an in. Kugani is too expensive for a teleport. Oh, I need to check up on my... We're gonna have to we're gonna have to hit the Linza anyways. I gotta go check up on my I, on my grant company stuff. I sent the I'm so close to finally getting the last rank. I've actually been bothering to level up my uh oh god. To level up my uh I forget what it's called. I accidentally went to the aft castle by instinct. I could drop off the glamour first. Uh What's the name for it? The adventuring thing. I misspelled that. The adventurer squadron. That's what it's called. I've actually been bothering to go and do the XP only training for them and send them on the occasional mission. I found out recently that there is a weekly mission you can do to get like Aetherite discount tickets. And you know that I will be doing that every week. Because there's nothing better than reducing my teleport costs. We love reducing teleport costs. Actually, are these Isle Gears only for the Glamour Dresser, or are they a wardrobe item? Let's find out. Yeah, they're just a Glamour Chest item. Hell yeah. Also, new, new, these are dyeable. New dyeable pants are always good. I wonder if they die good. Let's find out. Because some, some versions of genes in Final Fantasy do not die well. That's pretty good. Eh. Eh. They die black pretty well. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Oh, I like that. You compare that to like the spring bot the peace lovers pantaloons in i imagine the same color like a little too blue i don't love it as much as i like the way that the isle farmhand ones look you dig those boots though do i want to sub out the my right now i got the i'm used just using the urban boots dyed for my rogue fit i'm wondering if those would fit better Let's take a peek. Where are they? I'd have to dye them. They're a little too bright for what I got going on. Oh, that comes out pretty good, doesn't it? That's pretty good. The silver accents on the boots match the silver accents on the coat. Uh... Yeah, I like it better. Updated fit. The cobalt brown. Yeah. Oh, I like that much better. Excellent. I don't have the portrait linked for my rogue yet. For my ninja. I don't know why I'm told to call it rogue instead of ninja every single time, but I am. I am, and we all have to live with that life choice that I made. Uh, 
I'm always collecting new boots in Final Fantasy. You can never have enough boots for glamours. The boots, in my humble opinion, are perhaps the best piece of feetwear for, I think, any outfit. Well, there are many different styles of boot, and I'm a huge boot fan. I should have gone to the... I need to go to the airship landing and go to Gridania. That's what I need to do. Um, we'll go to Gridania. Actually, we're right here. I should turn over my ventures. I'm making extremely slow progress on my ventures. I haven't bothered to gear up my fisher. I have one fisher and then one dragoon. And I've not bothered to give my fisher any gear besides the default. I don't know what changing their gear actually does. It, to my mind at least, it would make them have... They would get better stuff. And I've, I've just put my... Uh, you know, the Saints two-handed thaumaturge or something? What? What's this thing? Oh, cute. Little beetle stick. Sometimes they bring home bangers, and most of the time it's garbage. Well, most of the time it's like dungeon gear. And I've recently started using the dungeon gear to, because I, I I ran into a problem where I ran out of ventures, and I was like, how do I get more ventures to keep leveling up my retainers? And the answer is just sell all the green gear they give you to turn it into into mats. So that you can I just totally lost my train of thought. So that you can turn it into like seat company seals and then turn all the company seals into ventures, which is what I've been doing. Um and then I've just been using the leftovers to like gobble up other miscellaneous items from the grand company inventory. I feel like for the sake of completion I should grab some of the diable like officer pieces, even if I don't necessarily love them as glamour items. Like the like serpent the uh, lieutenant's coat, is it called? You know what I need to do when I'm done with my crafters is I need to I need to do all the tribes. And that will take I think the rest of my mortal life to do. Um Not that doing the tribal quests is hard. I just, I'm so far behind and there's so many tribal quests. Is this the game done? Yes, levels. Some of the same race. Bonus company seals, we take those. Squad members are all of them. Five duty checking every level. 20% chance to receive crafter scripts. That's kind of cool. Ooh, I got magic and offense rewards. That's very cool. Um, accompanying a pugilist. I'm gonna accompany an Elizin. But I don't use pugilists or Elizins on my team. I'll confirm it anyways. Uh, three or more members of the same class. All squadron members are of a different race. Mm, I'm not going to confirm that one. My The end goal is to have an all-cat squad. We're going for the full Makote team. Uh, when not accompanying someone of the same race, there's... there's yes, eh. Three or more of the same race, I can get contemporary war offense. So, I mean... We love the all Makote team. We're, we're big on it. We're huge about it. I just gotta level them up enough that they can do... Not my command mission. Not my squadron mission. We just have to level them up enough that they can do this. But they're not a high enough level. Is it wrong? Am I supposed to mix up... Am I not supposed to have them be a traditional set of four with a healer, two DPS, and a tank? 
was looking up a, a guide on doing applied missions. They're like, oh, you should just have two warriors and two arcanists, and they'll solve. They'll, you can do them when they're. You can do it when they're all level fifty. It's like really. I didn't. I didn't know anything about none of that. Five, 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 two, seven. Do this one more. That's good XP, right? I won't send them on the mission that they're doomed to fail, though. How long does that take them to do, actually? It's another 18 hours. Okay. Then the rest of the game can do the training course. I, I didn't actually realize that the comprehensive training course doesn't actually reshuffle the attributes any. It just gives XP. I should have been doing it the whole time. It's also just an hour long. Like, ventures. So whenever I turn my ventures over, I can go and make them train again to level up the rest of my squadron. Pop to joint, honey. Actually, do I have anything to dump off the... Also, uh, doing this regularly, this dumping off gear, it's actually made me scroll back through all of the dungeon gear that I own, but never bothered to do anything with. And I ended up clearing a lot of old gear that I didn't realize I was still holding on to. I ended up clearing a lot of like 80 plus gear that I had just sort of been hoarding in my inventory without realizing it. I suppose because I had never bothered to actually go through set by set, item by item. I haven't gotten rid of some of the Crypt Lurker's jewelry because I'm still debating whether or not I'll ever use it in a glamour. And I have like a bunch of I like these Aetherus chokers. I just think that they're cool. Because they're not actually like a choker, they're just like a little item attached to the neck. In the back of the neck. And I think it's kind of cool. I've been holding on to all of the different versions of that choker I can get. I kind of want to put one of each into the glamour chest so that I can use them. I just feel like they're cool. I got this classical ring of slaying. Is this attached to something? It's not. It's back when I bought a bunch of, uh, like, a full set of classical gear. Or I got, like, the basic gear, or I got the basic crafted gear and then turned it in for that, like, special currency in Radzat Han and then traded it for, like, the augmented gear or whatever so I could put it on my Dragoon. Ancient times, ancient times. I still don't know how to get purple gatherer scripts. I need to do that. I need, I need to get purple gatherer scripts. This is unrelated to anything we're doing today. The thought has just occurred to me that like, I have a bunch of white, ga I've capped white gatherer scripts, but I want to get like the end game script gear from like the level 90 merchants. But they all take purple gatherer scripts. And I don't know how to get them. I assume that they're from like level 90 collectibles, but I can't tell which ones. Are they like only time limited collectibles? It's all a mystery to me. I, th I read something that was like, oh, it's only these ones. But then like I went with like my level like 89 botanist and I gathered that item and it still only gave me white scripts. So I feel like I'm doing something wrong. It's like um, not that I need to, I just want the better gear for gatherer. I don't know if I need the better, better gear for my gatherers. I mean, they're level 90 and I got all of the like, uh, level 89, uh, merchant equipment, like the AR, um, gathering armor and gear. So I don't actually know if I'm ever going to need anything better. <laughs> I mean, sure, I won't be, like, getting the best possible results on my collectibles, but I don't know if I'm 
all that super pressed about it. I started a little bit of like the delivery stuff. I messed up every single input on typing in slash timers <laughs> to check my time. I started doing some of the custom deliveries um, for like uh, that one scientist lady down in the uh, thingamabobber on Charlian. Um, I have not started the Lady Ameliance. I have the quest. I just haven't started it. Um, that's because I'm not entirely certain why I should. I don't remember what the purpose of the custom deliveries. I know that at the end you get to play a dress up with the person you helped do deliveries with, but I don't remember. I did a lot of the deliveries like for Miner and Botanist because they gave a lot of XP, which is why like I leveled up the custom deliveries for Endwalker a little bit, just because I was trying to get from level 80 to 90. But I was gonna save bothering to do anything else until like I got like some of my crafters close to that level so that I could craft the collectibles to turn in for XP. Is there a non-XP motivation? I wonder if you get good rewards off of doing them. Probably. Probably get good rewards off of doing those in-game deliveries. But... I don't know what they are. And that means they don't exist. <laughs> that means there's no reason to ever bother doing the custom deliveries if I can't comprehend what they what the rewards are is there anything i wanted to pick up off the corner master i don't think so this was the coat i was talking about the serpent lieutenant's coat it's not a gl great glamour piece but it is it is a unique glamour item it's actually not terrible. It's not dieable. But, I mean, I'm sure I can make some outfit out of it. You know what thing I'm probably not going to pick up is, like, any of the weapons. Not great. Like, like many old final FF14 x back items, they didn't... They didn't age great. They're just not horribly interesting to look at. I'm always I'm always checking for new dragoon lances to make to incorporate into my outfits, but just eh, not feeling them. What I am feeling is getting like more adventures all the time. I finally saved up enough to get all of the different emotes that were here, though, which is nice. Just constantly trying to find new ways to spend my seals. I figure the game still has a bunch of mechanics to have you do stuff with your serpent seals and your storm seals or whatever. You know what I feel kind of bummed out about is the fact that I am not in the maelstorm i want that flame coat the flame lieutenant's coat or whatever it looks good it's a good glamour piece i thought it looked cool but apparently if i if i transfer grand companies you have to like start all the way over so I guess I'll have to like start from scratch on my the the part that I don't want to do again is the adventurer squadron. It takes so long to do anything with the adventurer squadron. I really wouldn't want to start over with that. If I could, because I mean I'll grind out all the other levels, no problem. I can do all the other stuff, no problem. Just if I have to start the adventurer's squadron over from level one, I don't know if I have that power. I don't know if I have the power to run 
any A Realm Reborn dungeons with the Adventurer's Squadron. I don't have that sort of strength in my in my bones, in my body, in my blood. I did it once, and I didn't enjoy it. The command missions, not fun. Specifically because I didn't get to play tank. I imagine it'd be, life would be a little easier if you could just play warrior and pull and do AoEs like a normal person. The fact that they don't do AoEs. You're still on just chatting, by the way? What are you... A cop come to come to rat me out? Can't believe it. Can't believe it. Absolutely cannot believe it. I'm being ratted out right now. She said oh, you've been streaming on the one thing for the whole time. Can't believe it. I, I'm betrayed by my by those I would deem close. My closest confidant stabbed me in the back. I don't have any water with me. All right, I'm gonna go get a drink of water, which will involve me leaving the room. And I'll be back in like five minutes. Do, do you actually? Do you guys want some tunes while I'm gone? You guys want something to listen to while I'm gone? Those are just start playing YouTube video. I caught it. I caught it though, cause I'm clean with it, cause I'm the best. Let me find a. You know, what I don't like is I want to like open. Ooh, I got the Pat Upon Instrumentals playlist. Hell yeah, baby! What? Hold on. Y'all hear this? Dude. Pat upon is so good. You guys enjoy the pat upon while I'm cooking. And now, now we're cooking. Alright, I'll be right back.
I'm back. Y'all been... Y'all been enjoying these pad upon... This pad upon music? It, it does kind of rule. Real. Real posters agree. What if we turned off and like really hear me out on this? The background music for Final Fantasy and we just had this playing instead. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I love Pad Upon so much. Now, now there's a game I wish I could stream. Okay, good. It's still not too loud. Actually, I, I should turn it up a little more. One sec. I I would. I, would, I love Pad Upon. Another of my favorite games. I've never had the pleasure of playing like Pad Upon three. But I would love to play Pat Upon 3. It came out like on the... Just gonna look it up. I don't remember what console it came out on, but I was never able to play it. It, it was on the, the... It was on the PSP, but like I only ever had like my starting deck of PSP games and I never bought any more. You know what the worst part is? is I can't... I don't know if they sell PSP games no more, so I don't know if it's I don't think it's on PC either. That's the worst part. I don't have a way to play Pad Upon no more. I have a PSP. I just don't actually have like the the physical game Pad Upon 3. I got Pad Upon 1. I got Pad Upon I played so much Pad Upon 2 on the PSP. But I don't got no Pad Upon 3. I've heard decent things about Pat Upon 3. Jesse, you ever play Pat Upon? I asked her knowing absolutely that she has not. That game rules. Pat Upon, uh, for those playing along at home who aren't aware, Pat Upon is a kick-ass rhythm game for the PlayStation Portable handheld console in which you control a bunch of weird little eyeball people and you make a little army with them and you use them to uh, fight dragons. It's sick. It's a rhythm game, and you input different rhythms to like make your army move or attack or defend themselves or run away. It's super fun. It's super fun, occasionally incredibly hard. Because you have to put in like a four beat command. Each of your like buttons is a different pad upon drum, and you have to play a certain drum pattern to make your pad upons do stuff. And usually you have to, enemy attacks, you have to do a button to defend, like a, a, a rhythm to defend against. So you always have to be watching because the enemy will only give you like one chance to defend yourself before they annihilate your entire army instantly. We've had a couple pat upon moments where like the dragon is about to breathe fire, but then you flub up a single beat and then you can't defend yourself in time. You don't put in like the, the block. Pat upon command in time, and then you get owned. Because you have to do it all. There's a hard metronome, and you have to do everything to that metronome. Ooh, Temple of the Fist. It's been. I don't I think I've only ever done this dungeon one time. Man, Pat upon rules. I love that. I played that game so much on the PSP. I think I probably have like a hundred hours in Pat Upon 2, which is pretty impressive for a pure rhythm game. I remember like I'm, I was I was trying to like make like the most overpowered Pat Upon army build that I could. I was turning all of my little Pat Upons into tree people, because the tree people had 
they have really good stagger and by staggering uh, a boss the boss will like drop an item so you could just stun lock pat upon bosses and get them to drop like a bunch of the items that you need to like evolve your pat upons and build stuff and make weapons and stuff pat upons so cool man they don't make games they don't make a pat upon like Dragon's Dogma, there is only one game that does what Patapon does as far as I know, and it's Patapon, baby. There's no other game that scratches that extremely specific itch. There's only the Patapon. Which sucks because Patapon's super fun. But the fact that it's all hard locked to PSP means that I'll probably never get to play Patapon too. Unless I, I did something, and, and, and this I probably would do it. Do you think that someone's like pirate ported all of the Catapon games to PC? Do you think do you think I could be so lucky? Maybe one day. Maybe we'll get like a Steam Deck. Because we all know that I don't. You know, I I got the the Macintosh laptop. I'm not gonna be able to run it on. My computer, get like a Steam Deck and run Catapon on it. That would be. Really... I would love to find a way to both play and stream. I don't know if Catapon would make a good stream deck. That is a, that is a pure rhythm game that takes so much of my brain. My mom played a little bit of Catapon as well when we had it on the PSP, and I remember her. It was something that my mom said that. When she played Patapon, she couldn't be doing anything else because she had to focus on the beat so much. And she was like, I don't know how you're able to like hold a conversation with someone while playing Patapon at the same time. But maybe I could do it. Maybe I could channel all of the power of my my younger self. Stream Patapon. They got a Patapon category on Twitch. I can't. I'm doing a dun dungeon, so I'll have to look up look it up after. Do you think they got a Patapon category on Twitch? I wonder how people are streaming Patapon. There's gotta be one, right? There's gotta be one person who's like the the er Patapon streamer. It's like all they do is just stream a bunch of Patapon. There's gotta be one. There's gotta be one person and they're just like me for real. I immediately messed up my tin cheat I moved. Guys, I'm kind of a mover. Jesse, have I ever shown you any Patapon? Have I ever shown you what like Patapon actually looks like? I don't know if you've ever actually seen Patapon gameplay of any kind. That's not an answer. <laughs> you can't I'm just a I'm just a girl your way out of this one. You gotta say yes or no. Is that you is that uh is that emote a, a no but you could show me? I'm trying to see I could probably find like the last boss of Patapon 2. I think I can find like a silent playthrough. That's what we're when we're done with this dungeon, that's what immediately what we're gonna do. Our tank is stronger than all of us. Did you watch him just walk through there? <laughs> I'm beginning to think I shouldn't stream Final Fantasy again because man, it's really chugging unfortunately. 
Granted, most of the time that I, I play Final Fantasy, I'm doing so just because it's a nice game that I can I can sort of play slowly and I can like read a book while I'm waiting on cues and stuff. You know, that's how I got through all those Brandon Sanderson novels. Jesse, if you ever want to cl absolutely clear some Brandon Sanderson novels, get really into Final Fantasy XIV and just whenever you're queuing to level up a DPS, you can just read the book for the like 10 minutes that you wait for the queue to pop. I tell you, you'll make great progress. Trust me. We gotta get you back into Final Fantasy, my Jesse. The new expansion is coming up soon, Jesse. Is the music loud enough? Because I, I have the, the audio set to a different level on stream than it is in my earlobes. Because for me, it's it's making nice background tracks while I have overpowering the, the Final Fantasy audio, but I can never truly confirm. I wish, like, in the same way that you can with, like, a professional sound mixer, that I could, like, I could solo my stream audio and listen to it through my headphones without broadcasting it through OBS out into the world, but we all know that's a, a futile dream. Without using an actual Macintosh audio mixer to output the audio manually, you know, trying to load up Audacity on my... <laughs> on my computer right now. I'm gonna refresh my stack and start my rotation. Port and Star? I think that's sides. Instinct. That is back in. Our tank is getting a bunch of bone stacks right now because they're hitting the deflection. For an app. Full forward shield. Pointing right at the tank. Is that tank cluster? Yeah, it is. Um, opposites or sames? It should be same, shouldn't it? Pulling down. The pots sounds like a new mechanic. It's not too bad, boss mechanic. Thing. Man, Ooh, I accidentally grabbed the window. Oh, gang, this one slaps. I just heard this the Patapon track change, and this one, guys, this one, this one kind of rules. Sorry guys, this one's a banger, for real. Please be advised. This pad of pump background track in particular.
try not to talk over the pad if I need to. Spirit wave, I assume, is a wave. That's a slaughter, looks like it's gonna be. Mm -hmm. Big one. Oh, yeah. Spirit Ray, which is the rig that feeds into that, like, cool little dance. Yep. into it. <laughs> I thought it was over. I walked into it anyways. Nice. Alright. Open the treasure coffer. One second. I have to put it on the VOD screen so I can find this gameplay that we all that we're all heavily invested in seeing Actually, let's just find a pedal and do long play. There has to be one, right? Pedal on to full rock through gameplay, no commentary, long play, baby. That's the kind of shit I'm talking about. Oh, cursed day! It's so horribly low resolution. Oh no. You know what the problem is? I think that's that was, I think that's what the actual resolution of the game is. Is the craziest fucking part of it all? Petapon Two Rocker, Pet Two Remastered. What? What do you mean? Petapon Two Remastered. What? Petapon Two Remastered. Guys, I just, I...
Hello? I just hit my desk so hard, I fucked my entire setup up. Hello? Can you hear me again? Guys are... Guys. Huge news. Pat upon two remastered is on the PlayStation 4, baby! This is the most... And I don't know I don't know how to put this lightly. This is the most exciting news I've ever experienced in my life. And it's it's a 14 it's only $15. Guys, I really hate to say it, but like stream is going to end and 5 seconds later I'm going to be on my PS5 downloading Pat Upon 2. I'll uninstall Elden Ring right now to play Pat Upon 2. Holy shit. This is the most exciting moment of my entire uh, adult life. Is finding out that Padapon was remastered. <laughs> okay, there's a there's a playlist. Let's see if the person is talking in it. No, he's not. Perfect. Let's scroll all the way to the bottom. I'll showing you the last boss, guys. Tune out if you don't want spoilers. Oh no, that's the secret final boss, bro. Bro's fighting the secret final boss. Rad, rad of him, metal of him even. Oh, this is just a compilation of all bosses. All mini games. Patapon 2 remastered, walkthrough 100%. Part 19, which is final battle question mark. Okay, perfect. Hold on. Oh, I gotta I gotta pause the Patapon music. There we go. And then get this full screen and then get back over to OBS, which is no longer broken, hopefully. Hold on. Hold on. There we go. There we go. Wait, no, this is terrible. I don't want me to be on screen here. This isn't what I desire. Hold on. Um, let's duplicate this layer. Um, guys, trust. Trust. It's going to be all worth it. Trust. I need you, I re guys, I really need you to put all of your faith and all of your trust and all of your... I need you to give me your energy right now. Okay, we're gonna duplicate the scene. We're gonna go to this scene, and then we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna remove all of the stuff that is me. We're gonna we're gonna um hold on. I wanna just, I wanna just I wanna remove it, remove, remove it, remove me. Get me out of here. I don't need to be here for this. This is all about the pad upon gameplay. You don't understand. You don't understand. And I'm, you're gonna understand. But right now, you don't understand. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Just you. Are you here? I shake you. I shake you awake. <laughs> Wake up. <laughs> the pad upon gameplay has dropped. Guys, I'm Google crazy for pad. <laughs> Is this a cool intro? I literally don't care. Who asked? Yeah! 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 Check this shit out. <laughs> and there's this guy. He's one of the main antagonists. Get him. Yeah. <laughs> Ban this man immediately, mods. <laughs> Bros having me buy viewers and not talking about the pad upon gameplay? Kill him. See, they see him make the flames and they activate the defense mode. The protector of their little patapons. Like, I'm not crazy for thinking this is like the greatest thing ever made.
so you can see that all the different buttons are different drums. And they like they just froze half the army. That's bad. You don't want that to happen. I don't I don't know if they have all the uh, drum melodies in this walkthrough. But they have some really good gear, so who knows? There's there's something about like. The rhythm of the pat upon gameplay like gets into you. Oh, he fucking killed him. Whenever your Patapons die, you have to collect their little hats so you can bring them back later. I don't know how to tell you that I love this shit. I'm crazy for this shit. I think Patapon's the only game that, like, I lost progress in and it broke me as a person. Dude, I- there, there's a, a really hard mini game that you have to play to, like, forge some of the best weapons in the game. And I- I finally got, like, the good roll. Ah, you fucked up, man. Bro dropped the fever combo. Let's skip to the actual final boss of the game, because this guy, this Dorkulon is not the actual final boss of the game. He's one of the final bosses, though. You do that, and you, you, you go back to the, the village, get yourself geared up. Hold on, uh, let me show you what the village is like when you return to it. So you complete your mission, and your, your army marches back, and they have, like, carts that have all the items that you picked up behind you. Uh, and then once you're back in the village, like, everyone is celebrating the victory, and there's, like, a bunch of different, like, little stations where you can do stuff. Like, there's, like, a place where you can upgrade your pad upon, and, like, a place where you can equip them and stuff. So that's, like, the the, tr the big tree where you upgrade your pad upon. You can see they've got to get all the hats of everybody who died, and they'll bring them back to life. You go to the little mission totem, and you go here. And they're, they're changing their setup to fight the actual last boss. You are, we're going to look at the actual last boss, because things are freak. They got some eldritch horrors in this shit. This is the last boss of Patapon 2. There's a there's harder bosses, but this is the last boss of the main story. Check this Eldritch Abomination out. Isn't the art style just so fun? It puts your your team to sleep. And does this is a huge claw attack? It'll kill like basically anything it touches. I wonder why he went for the big fists for his hero catapon. Uh, is that gas? That's gas. Now it's scary when he does this because he'll like hold his hand out and he'll pluck one of your catapons, and he'll eat them, killing them instantly. And like, if it's your healer, normally your your hero, which is the one that had the fancy mask, will revive on their own after they die. But if this guy eats them, they don't come back to life. Which is terrifying, because the, your hero is like your biggest damage source. 
see what I mean? Oh, I got kicked out of the dungeon. <laughs> Anyways, this is what Patapon 2 is like. Then you have to keep, you can see like the screen pulses with the metronome. You're running away from the big claws, which is the correct choice there. You can like try and defend from the claws, but it's not great. It's really not great. And see, like that, how, like, he had to commit to running away before he knew that the breath attack, before he knew that he would stagger the boss. That happens a lot, because in Patapon, once you start your rhythm, you can't back out. If you back out, you'll lose your combo and your fever, and then your, your units won't hit as hard, they won't dodge as far, and they won't defend as well. He keeps running away, but running away doesn't work on the sleep powder. His, his whole army is getting put to sleep anyways. He should be doing a uh, uh, pad upon Don Chica, the, the wake up dance. Uh, hat upon, the one that's carrying your banner, is the most important one in your army because if the banner carrier dies, you lose instantly. He's trying to jump over it. He should just do the, the celebration dance one, uh, removes all negative buffs. So you can use it to get rid of the sleep instantly. He's trying to run away so he doesn't get grabbed. I wonder if you can jump over the grab. Any hoozle. This boss doesn't actually drop any materials, it just drops a lot of money. And then uh, he fights it for a long time and then it, it dies. I mean, you've basically seen the whole fight. Is it like Monster Hunter, when it gets wounded it starts like panting and stuff. Which is true of most of the bosses, you can tell when their health is low. You should die soon. Sick. Oh, oh, wait, hold on. I'll show you the forging mini game. You get like a big egg. The eggs let you play like online mini games. And there's a there's a cutscene. I don't know how it is. Hell yeah, dude. We love Patapon. Patapon rules. It's, it's goaded, as the kids say. And like, listen to these beats, man. They don't play. Patapon didn't play, man. One of my favorite games of all time. Hold on, let's find the minigame. Bro's got his fancy intro and I didn't ask. Not this one. There's like the gardening one. The gardening one's really hard. I don't like this one. This one's really hard. <laughs> Where's this, this smithing mini game? This is the one. You just have to do it in the same timing as his little stomps. That's it. But the timing is very exacting. And you have to perform the full rhythm perfectly, or else you won't get the best weapons. And you have to actually gather the materials. Tense, man. I think that's it. I think I think because this is a, an example of all three done perfectly. And then you have the very last. You, you have the three ones where it gets faster and faster, and then he gives you a final a final rhythm that's really easy. And you get a goaded item of some variety. Yes! All I'm saying is that Patapon is the coolest. Oh, here's the giant bell lady. There's a giant bell lady. She's cute. Thank you guys for coming to my Patapon TED Talk. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all for attending. <laughs>
Thank you, Jesse. For showing for showing your support for me in these dark dark times. <laughs> what the hell was I doing? Uh you know what? It's been three hours. I think that's all we're gonna stream for now. Oh, I have to raid someone. That's exciting. Who should I raid? Who's on? I don't wanna like raid someone with one viewer and like have them think that I'm like doing a bot raid or something. I I got viewers. I got viewers. Let's see. It's like I'm following. I fo I follow people. I follow the occasional stream blur. It's been known to happen. Um Yeah, let's let's raid Ross actually. He's only got like 14 viewers and we love Ross. I already know to raid him. Wait, how do I do a raid again? Is it slash raid? What? Gamers. What's happening in OVS right now? Oh. It's because I'm not actually... Oh. One second. Should we just go... I feel like I should have made a... Uh... I should have made a, a discreet exit screen, shouldn't I? That would have been wise. It would have been rise. That's why I couldn't. The raid command wasn't popping up. There we go. There we go. There we go. Everybody pile into the raid. Everybody get in. Get in. All right. Well, thank you everybody for coming to my impromptu unannounced stream. I, perhaps I will stream again unannounced. I won't tell anybody it's gonna happen. It'll just it'll just happen. Uh, uh, gotta gotta keep you on your toes. Gotta keep you on your toes. Well, until uh, next time. Could be a hundred years. Could be tomorrow. It won't be tomorrow. I can guarantee that. Um, because that's a jesty day. Bye, everybody. Bod watchers. <laughs>